3D printing is a fun hobby that welcomes new people into the fold every single day. What if we could give some advice to those people just getting started? How about five tips from the community? Let's do it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Head to brilliant.org forward slash 3D Printing Nerd and stick around to the end to find out lots more. There you are, welcome back. Uh, recently, my producer, David Tobin, he reached out on Twitter asking for some tips and tricks to help people make more awesome creations in 3D printing. The responses were great, and I have some personal experience with each to add in, so why don't we just dive right in? C. Adam Sporluck chimed in with a tweet, learn your machine. Being able to take it apart and back together will help you immensely. C. Adam Sporlock, this is a fantastic tip. I remember my first machine, the Flash Forge Creator Pro. Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd. Look, this is my Flash Forge Creator Pro right behind me. For the longest time, I was a bit scared to do anything with it. The extruders, the nozzles, and the bed, everything was super set in place, and I was legit super scared to do anything that might break it, or even just make it not work well. Once some time had passed, I felt comfortable swapping in a new nozzle. <laughs> I know I laugh at that now, but I was seriously anxious about not being able to put things back together. In fact, I still have a flexion extruder upgrade for that machine that I never installed. And I just kind of forgot about it until now. Let me know if you'd like to see a flexion extruder <laughs> installed on a Flash Forge Creator Pro. My second machine was the G-Create G-Max 1.5, and it was a kit. I learned very quickly about the mechanics of the machine and what each part did, and I enjoyed having that Creator Pro, but I think the G-Max actually taught me much, much more about 3D printing in general. A number of people mentioned magnetic and flexible build plates, and for very good reasons. At Midnight Smith said, no more scraping. At MadMonkey01 said, put down that scraper and flex. Volt the Robot said, no need to use glue or tape to keep the print stuck. When I started 3D printing at the end of 2014, Captain Tape and Blue Tape were what I remember being the two main ways you got filaments to stick. Now, nearly, what, six years later, we have magnetic flex plates available from not just 3D printer manufacturers, but from third-party manufacturers as well. Plus, there are more ways to get prints to stick, too. PEI is quite popular, and textured PEI makes for a great flex build plate solution. Yes, flexible plates make for easy part removal, and that's undoubtedly awesome. However, another benefit to using a magnetic flex plate is that your printer sees less wear and tear. If you've ever had a print stick too well to a static bed, it's not uncommon to have to chisel it off. I've had to do that. <laughs> That could easily throw off your bed level, and that could mean having to re-level your bed every time that happens. Ugh. At Samantha Snyder mentioned, learn how to level a build plate during the purge line or the skirt. She makes an incredibly good point. Sure, many machines now nowadays, they, they come with the ability to auto-level the bed. By that, I mean the machine will use a probe on a number of spots on the bed to ensure the distance from the bed to the nozzle is consistent across the entire bed itself. It's neat, don't get me wrong, but many machines don't have this. For example, the Creality Ender 3, one of the most popular and inexpensive 3D printer kits in the world, doesn't come with automatic bed leveling. I promise this is okay. Manually leveling the bed is easy to do, and I promise you'll get it down no problem. However, Samantha mentions leveling during the purge line and the skirt. To do that, make sure your bed is at least close to level first. When the print starts, watch as the first layer is laid down, and turn the bed knobs as the nozzle is moving around to get the perfect first layer. 
if you've never done this, it can seem incredibly crazy as you're adjusting the bed as it's printing. What? Huh? I promise you'll learn to recognize a good first layer just by looking at it. And once you do this, this method of adjustment, it just kind of becomes secondhand. At Krusty said, invest in a quality filament. Don't start with iffy Amazon or cheap stuff. Use a reputable quality brand until you are comfortable with the machine and only then branch out. The less variables, the easier it is to succeed and get help when needed. When first starting out, Chris, you're so bright, reducing the number of variables will greatly increase the chances of success. That's just science. This doesn't mean you need the top tier filaments, but it doesn't hurt to start with some known filaments. It's easy to ask others what works best for them. And yes, you know, ask 10 people and you'll get 10 different answers. Just ask people whose opinions you trust and you'll be just fine. Thankfully, in 2020, we have a lot of great filaments that look amazing and are incredibly easy to print with. At Gear3D Official, the thing I noticed when helping my friend out with their printer that would probably help others is knowing the proper terminology for different printer parts and knowing the basic names of certain slicer settings and knowing and figuring out what they do. It makes asking for help a lot easier for both parties since it will make communication a lot easier. This is a fantastic tip from Devin, and I think it is very important now more than ever. Newbies in 3D printing are gonna go online for help with any issues. This means Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Discord, message boards. These are all going to be places where they ask for help. I think a person asking for help using the correct terminology for parts is going to get better help. Plus, once you start to know the correct terms for parts, you will be able to better understand others' requests for advice and you will be able to help. You'll be able to be a helper. How cool is that? Really quickly, I've made a great place to get started with 3D printing terminology on my website and I'll put that link down in the description. A big old thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this episode. Brilliant is a problem solving website and app for your mobile device that helps you understand the laws that shape our reality through story driven learning and interactive challenges. You know, I was, I was thinking, I think part of what can make learning fun is applying what you've learned to your everyday life. Making concepts contextually relevant to you will not only help you absorb the information, but retain it and remember it as well. Brilliant helps you learn exactly that same way. Take for example, the science foundations learning path and inside of that, the physics of everyday course. Its tagline is discover physics in unexpected places from refrigerators to toilets, to traffic jams and water towers. <laughs> in fact, this course will teach you how to throw an ax better, thanks to physics. So thank you, physics. Go to brilliant.org forward slash 3D printing nerd to sign up for free. And the first 200 people who do so with my link get 20% off their annual premium membership. Listen, I hope these five tips help you make some incredibly awesome stuff. 3D printing is a wonderful hobby and it's an incredible tool to have in your digital fabrication tool set. Do you have any tips or tricks? Because I'd love to hear them. Leave them down in the comments for everybody to see. Be safe, be awesome, and hug each other more and from a safe distance. High five. I'm gonna have to start over. I missed it. Crap farts. Crap farts. <laughs>